Holy Father, what joy fills our heart this morning. Thank you, Lord. Father, we praise you and thank you for this day, for the faces we see here. We thank you for the choices to be here to worship you. May everything that is said and done be through your Holy Spirit and bring you praise and glory. For in Christ's name and for his sake we pray. Amen. I'm going to talk to Lori for just a second. We're actually going to be up here. It's going to be easier for them to speak. So, Good morning. I know you all missed me last week. It's good to be back. Um, for those of you who are, are here this week and were not uh, aware, um, a group of us went to Merida, de Mexico. It's on the Yucatan Peninsula uh, for a week of missions. Um, and so we're going to take a little time, you don't want to hear me, you hear me enough, uh, to talk a little bit about that. Just to give an overview, we'll be showing up at all sorts of different places over the next couple months, giving more in depth, showing pictures and doing. But while it was fresh on our mind, we just wanted to share in the praise of our experience and, and, and what we saw um, so I'm going to ask the mission team to come up here and stand with me for just a moment. Come on up on the stage. We're going to be crowded, but that's okay. We've been crowded all week in hammocks, and we smelled a lot worse than we do now. I can promise you that. So we're going to just spend a moment and have a few different team members uh, share with you, um, and then I will close us um, in, a, in a time of, of prayer. So we'll begin now. Buenos días. Good morning. <laughs> Buenos días. Nos gustaría empezar hoy agradeciendo a todos por sus oraciones y apoyo. We would like to start today by thanking you all for your prayers and support. El viaje fue una experiencia maravillosa y nos gustaría compartir con nuestra familia en la iglesia, lo que significa para algunos de los miembros de nuestro grupo. This trip was a wonderful experience, and so we would like to share with our church family what it meant to some of our group members. Primero hoy, voy a compartir nuestro versículo bíblico de nuestro equipo. First today, I will share our team Bible verse. La paz sea con ustedes. Peace be with you. Como el Padre me envió a mí. As the Father has sent me. Así yo lo envío a ustedes. So also I am sending you. Juan 20, 21. John 20, 21. Este versículo guió nuestro viaje de misión en general y se encuentra en nuestras camisetas. This verse guided our overall mission trip and is found on the back of our t-shirts. El segundo versículo bíblico fue el versículo que los niños memorizan esta semana. The second Bible verse was the verse the children memorized this week. Porque yo sé, for I know, los planes que tengo para nosotros. The plans I have for you, afirmado Señor, declares the Lord, planes de bienestar, plans to prosper you, y no de calamidad, and not to harm you, para daros un futuro, to give you a future, y una esperanza, and a hope. Jeremías 29, 11. Jeremiah 29, 11. Ahora, algunos de los miembros de nuestro equipo quieren compartir ellos experiencias con ustedes. And now, a few members of our team will share the experiences with you. Gracias. Thank you. Good morning. I had the honor to spend the last week in Merida, Mexico. First of all, I'd like to thank the church for allowing us to go, and Pam, Brian, and especially Michael that made this trip truly possible. Upon arrival, we were greeted with open arms. Even with the language barrier, there was not a single person who did not attempt to speak to me or build a strong relationship with me. The welcoming by these people taught me a valuable lesson, that we are all brothers and sisters in Christ, regardless of race, socioeconomic status, or any other typical dividing factor. I also learned a valuable lesson about faith while in Mexico. I've had issues with my faith in recent times. I've gone through periods where I felt worthless and I felt as if I was completely alone. Through group devotions, mission work, and talking to the people from Mexico and members of the other church, I've learned that having doubts is completely normal. I've learned that having doubts doesn't make me any less of a person of faith or any less of a person in general. The disciples even doubted when Jesus first appeared to them after resurrection. After these doubts, they went on to start the church. I can happily say that my faith in Christ has blossomed after going on this trip, as I had a feeling of belonging that had been absent from my life for months. Mexico was able to bring light to the fact that we are people of all, 
we as people are all equal, and that we as people of Christ should simply treat people with kindness, as it opens the door for people to come to church and grow in faith. One of the things that we did, which was new to me, was some journaling. And um, it is so deeply personal, but I'm going to read my entry from yesterday. I'm sorry. I'm really tired. (laughs) (laughs) Traveled back to Boone today. What a week this has been. As I prayed during the day, God laid on my heart that I was so blessed to be part of such an amazing team. My fellow FBC teammates were incredible, and I don't want to forget how I'm feeling right now. As I prayed for each youth and adult, I clearly heard God's voice describing each member, and here is what I heard. Andy, courageous. Emma, joyful. Emmy, loving. Grace, grace-filled. Jazz, hopeful. Madeline, mature. William, strong. Brian, steadfast. Michael, patient. (laughs) We saw a different side of him. (laughs) Me, I was humbled. The night before we left, I prayed God would break my heart to my sin and let me see his purpose for me. My pride was chipped away every day. I was humbled in ways I never would have planned. But as it says in Proverbs 19:21, many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. My prayer is I continue on this path of humility so God can continue to mold and shape me. We are going to um, be coming to see different groups, different times, and really going more as we organize our pictures so that we can show our church family a little bit more of the faces and places. Um, But today I wanted you to get a sense of where we were. And I, and I think we've, they've done a good job of that for you. Um, before we left, I, I cautioned our team about thinking that we are going and taking God to people. Um, God is already there. And so often, and I think as most of these folks found, um, when you're on mission, God works on you probably more than he works on the areas around you. Um, and it was a deep, deep time of spiritual growth for this group. And there are so many stories, so many things, and I encourage you as their church family, the people who prayed for them um, and and supported them, um, to ask them, whether it's our our new concrete maestro um, or our, our, our children caregivers or our bucket filler, There are so many stories, and I want and we want you to know that so that you can hear the joy of God in the voices as they talk about these experiences. And I just want to, in closing, say thank you. Thank you so much for being a church family that loves your young people and supports them to do what we are called in Scripture to do. Let's go to God in prayer. Forgiving God, creator of all, he who is present in all time and all places. Thank you for this experience. We ten went, but we were there as an entire church. We thank you for the prayers. We thank you for the support. We thank you for all of the love that this church has. We continue to ask you, as we lift it up, to inspire us to be your hands and your feet, to find you in the world, and to build your kingdom as we are commanded in the scripture. It's not easy, and we know this, but it is so worth it. 
Thank you for allowing us to come today and worship and praise you. I thank you for these folks that gave of their time to go. I ask that you continue to lay the burden of mission upon their hearts as we move forward. We lift all of this up to you in your son who came, died, and was resurrected. Jesus. Amen. Young people, wherever you are, wow. Roy asked me uh, to say a word this morning about the impact of deep impact. And I must add to that the impact of this team to Mexico. But let me go back to deep impact Boone. This week, First Baptist Church has hosted 80 plus students and leaders from seven churches across our state. Some traveled as much as five hours to come here. They chose to come and serve in the name of Jesus. They were not entertained while they were here, except through the fellowship of one another. They slept on cots, air mattresses, on the floor. Don't know if any of them slept in hammocks. Could have been. They were physically fed by the North Carolina Baptist men feeding team. They were spiritually fed, however, through the week by their adult leaders, the college student-led staff, and a special youth pastor, Paul Langston. They were charged while they were here to be the light of Jesus in a dark world, to live as good, right, and true, which was the fruit of the light, Ephesians 5, 8 through 10. 
In doing that, they were involved in some 38 projects throughout the high country. They were involved in ministry to senior adults, to children. They were involved in community service. They were involved in sports ministry, construction. And as they went, the light in their young lives shone brightly. The light of love, goodness, righteousness, and truth. Back to the word impact. 1 Corinthians 3, 5 through 9 says this, if you will allow me. What, after all, is Apollos? And what is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe. As the Lord has assigned to each of us a task, I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God made it grow. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who makes it grow. The man who plants and the man who waters have one purpose, and each will be to be rewarded according to his own labor. For we are, for we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. As I looked at this scripture, this is exactly what happened this week in Boone. Some planted a seed. Some watered. Now God will allow things to grow. We are all his workers. We are his building. So we must be about the same thing that Deep Impact was about this week. Two, sorry, two young men gave the accepted Christ right here in the sanctuary this week. God working in their lives, just as the scripture described. Many were able to witness this young man, these young men being baptized down at the river on the Greenway Trail. This was their desire. The kingdom of God has increased. Praise God for the deep impact made in their lives. Pray with me, please. As we come to this prayerful moment in worship, we reflect on the events of the week and all the many blessings that we are thankful for. Safe travel for many. Lives changed. Seeds planted and God's promise to grow the seed. May we follow fellow workers always, may we fellow workers always be willing to be your light in the world through the opportunities we have each day. Please accept our lives for your service and our offerings to continue the growth of the kingdom. In the name of Jesus, the King, amen.
Boy, it's been good to be in the house of the Lord today. Thank you so much, Fur and Nancy, for being faces of the experiences that we've had this week. We've encouraged one another as a staff for summer to be about rest, relationships, and experiences. And some weeks, uh, one of those things is absent. It sounds like this past week rest was absent, but a lot of experience and a lot of relationship. And summer gives us those opportunities. And I just, I echo uh, my thanks to this church, but to, to all of you that shared already. Uh, part of our worship is praying as we've prayed uh, prayers of thanksgiving for experiences, uh, prayers of praise for safe travels, prayers of invocation for the spirit to be in this place and to mingle with us and to invite us into worship. And part of praying it also is, is prayers of confession. Uh, I, I want us all to join Pam in, in praying, God, break, break our hearts for what breaks yours. You know, break, break our hearts for what breaks yours. Uh, and I, I, that's what this prayer of the people is about. It's praying for one another, for us as a family, corp, uh, gathered corporately together as a community of faith, of, of guests or neighbors or friends or, or those that have just come in to be here. And so... Uh, we pray for one another. Uh, it's also a prayer for those that are sick among us, that are traveling, uh, that are dealing with an empty chair, separation, uh, some kind of separation. And so we pray for, for those that are grieving loss of, of all kinds. And so I invite you for just a moment uh, to, in this time of prayer together, uh, prayers of the people, to pray for one another. If you have a name that you want to lift uh, in prayer to God, I encourage you to do that. Uh, and then following that time of audible prayers, I will close our prayers together. Let's pray together. O oh Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. You, God, alone are worthy of worship. You are indeed great, O oh God, in faithfulness. O oh God, for lifting our spirits, we are humbled and thankful. For you are truly present in this place, this hour. May you alone be glorified and lifted up as we worship you. Hear our prayers for one another, for those that are sick, whether it is emotionally or mentally or spiritually or physically. Where there is brokenness, God, we pray for healing and mending and bringing back together. Where there is separation, God, we pray for reunion with you. Oh God, help us to not be distraction or anything that would cause someone not to know you or to see you. May we not be involved in anything that would separate one from you, oh God. God, be with these that are grieving, that are hurting from the loss of a loved one, the loss of a relationship, the loss of an experience, the loss of a job, some kind of transformation or change that has caused grief and, and emptiness, and maybe even an empty chair. And so, God, we pray that you grant the, com the grieving comfort and peace and strength. We do pray for our mission partners in Merida, Mexico, the North Carolina Baptist on Mission, North Carolina Disaster Relief, Passport Mission Camps, that will greet our children and our young people. And we lift these partners to you. We pray for Jim Bob in Nicaragua and his safekeeping for his family and the mission of New Song. All these partners we ask that you pour your grace on and your encouragement on. Be with the churches that have gathered in this place and have gone home. And may they have taken the impact they made and that was made on them home and not left it where they went. Hear our prayers, O oh God. Thank you for meeting us where we are. And it's in Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen and amen. One of the impacts of having folks in the building is maybe an impact on our sound system. I'm not sure. There is an impact on use of facilities. One young man came in this week, uh, not part of Deep Impact, but he had a baseball cap on and he had, he had had a long, long night. You could tell he was hurting. Uh, he had he'd, he'd indulged in something that had saturated his body, and you could, you could sense 
and, 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 and actually know that he had had a long night. And, he, and I said, you want to walk in the sanctuary and just have a conversation, pray a little bit? He said, sure. He said, you're going to let me wear my hat in there? And I said, I don't think Jesus came to earth to tell you not to wear a hat in the sanctuary. Now, I don't wear a hat in the sanctuary. Uh, it's, it's who I am. It would, be, it would be just as unnatural for me to have one on as it was for him to have one on. Okay? And uh, so I think, you know, the impacts may be completely different than what you think the impact's going to be. Uh, but uh, let's lean on, on God today and hear what God has to say because he has sure opened our ears and our eyes and our hearts this morning to receive something. And so I thank you again for all the leadership of worship that's happened already. If you are able to stand, our scripture this morning is a gospel lesson. It's found in the gospel of Mark. So if you will stand for the gospel lesson found in Mark chapter 4, verse 35 through 41. And if Madeline and I had practiced, I'd love for her to come up here and read it for me. She doesn't need practice, you can tell. Mark 4, verse 35. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still. And then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. And he said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the winds and the sea and the papers blow away? Obey him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Thank you. Thank you, Summer Choir. And all of you are invited to join the Summer Choir. They gather and rehearse uh, a familiar hymn, a familiar song, and prepare for worship each Sunday morning following Bible study. They gather in there around 1030 or so, and Billy Ralph whoops them into shape and gets them up here and ready to sing. So if you would like to be a part of that, I encourage you to do that. And come on Sunday mornings uh, and get ready to sing with them. The gospel lesson this morning is an important one. A story of Jesus with his disciples on a boat. We've been encouraging one another through scriptures and through words and sermons of do not lose heart. Do not lose heart. In a, in a day of struggle, it might be yours personally. A day of, 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 of angst, a day of hurt, a day of celebration and joy. Whatever it is, do not, do not lose heart. You want to hold on to it when it's a good day. You don't want to let go. Uh, one of the things that Paul shared that, that really meant a lot to me this past week about being the light of the world, and I couldn't help but think of when I was watching the mission team stand up here, was, was my prayer is he talked about one kind of light in a storm. We're going to talk about storms and wind in a minute, but one kind of light in a storm that lights up the sky in the dark is lightning. And lightning just flashes in the sky and the, and the whole sky lights up. But just as quick as it came, what happens? It becomes dark again. It becomes dark again. One of my good friends that uh, I spent some time together shared that, you know, one, something happens when, when, they, when they return from a mission trip or, or, or an experience like the Holy Land. Uh, and it's just an incredible spiritual high. And it's almost like the, the day they get back, the lightning, <laughs> the light that lit up the sky becomes dark again. I mean, you, you want to hold on to it. You want to hold on to that light. And so being asked to be the light of the world is more than an experience, a one experience. But it's, a, it's the, the call and the challenge to be the light of the world day after day after day. So do not lose heart. You are not alone. Do not lose heart. You are not alone. Do not lose heart when, when you look out and all you see is rocky soil. Jesus told that story. When you look out and all you see, Jesus saying, scatter seeds. The kingdom of God is like scattering seeds. So get after it. Get busy. And you look out and all you can see is rocky soil. And you go, there's nothing going to grow there. Nothing's going nothing's to happen there. But Jesus says, do not lose heart. That, that the faith that will make a difference, the faith that can, that can grow in ro- even in rocky soil is the smallest seed. The faith of a mustard seed, the smallest, will lead us. And when you look out and there's giants all around, and there's no way that you can, you can conquer the giant, and, you're, and, and God reminds you, don't lose heart. You're not alone. It's not you mustering up enough energy or enough strength or work hard enough or be big and bad and tough enough. But it's a dependence on God that brings down a giant. Not you. Do not lose heart. We celebrated today over a 50-year-old librarian. I think she's 51. Been a librarian since she was one. We celebrated on our way into Bible study and worship one who has been a saint in front of us and worked the library and had preached sermons every day and every Sunday. There was a a man at Deep Impact that was 86, sitting there every day, and he kept, kept, one time, he didn't go out on construction. He sat in my office for about an hour, and he said, I'm just not doing anything, Roy. I'm not doing anything. And I said, I'm going to tell you something. You've been, you've been preaching loud all week because these young people know how to start, but they're not a lot that finish. And you're sitting there at 86 and you're finished. And you're finishing. More than lightning. <laughs> More than lightning. And that's what the message is. Do not lose heart. For the external might be wearing out. But the scriptures we read together say the internal is being renewed day by day by day. 
That's good news. And so this morning, we're reminded when the winds are blowing, do not lose heart. Do not lose heart. In this chapter 4, before the verses that I read, verse 33 and 34, Mark ended the story of the parables of the seeds and the faith of a mustard seed with these words. With verse 33, with many such parables, Jesus spoke the word to them. As they were able to hear, he did not speak to them except in parables. But he explained everything in private to the disciples. He explained everything in private to the disciples. What I want you to suppose and, and struggle with and, and listen to and, and, and put a part of you this morning as you read these scriptures again and again, and they're familiar words, it's a familiar story. I want you to hear that Jesus used words, told stories, parables of truth, but he explained to the disciples. He explained to the disciples. And what we read in the Gospel of Mark this morning is more than words. It's not just words. It's not just a story of truth. It's not a parable of truth. Jesus goes from words to the real deal. Boy, he's a, we, don't, we don't sit here and we worship God and we say, Thank you, Jesus, for your life and your death and your resurrection that I can have eternal life if I have a faith in you. Thank you, Jesus. And we don't come and go, we're going to gather here today to worship God's son, the storyteller. We're coming today to worship God's son, Jesus, the teacher. We've come today to worship God, the parable teller. Oh, he was a great storyteller. The best. No, we gather today. Because Jesus was more than words. More than words. Explain to the disciples in private. As they lived with him and followed him, they could see the explanation of truth and parables. As Jesus lived with them and in front of them. Something that really amazes me in a crowd. And it can be the wind blowing. And I mean, it is loud. It can be at a concert and they're blowing the roof off. It can be at a ball game. And they're blowing the roof off. I mean, it's loud. Loud. And it's a crowd. And there can be a baby in a baby chair sound asleep. Or you can be at the mall and it's, you know, the, the music's blaring and shop, it's before Christmas and they're bumping into you and knocking you down. and Just everybody's in a hustle and bustle. And there can be a baby in a stroller sound asleep. Or you might go to Skip's house on a Sunday afternoon. And all the grandchildren running around, and it's loud in that house. But the matriarch can be asleep in the recline. And you can go, how in the world? How in the world? With all this noise, with this wind, if you will, can they be asleep? Or in a crowd and in the winds, we might get ourselves and find ourselves in the fetal position. We might, we might just, it might be bad enough. And we're hurting enough. And we're scared enough. And the winds are overwhelming. And everything is overwhelming. And we just might find ourselves getting in that fetal position. And we might just sleep because we don't want to get up. We might just sleep because we want to escape. We might just sleep because we want to run. It might be somebody saying, how are they asleep? Well, it's all they can muster. It's all they can muster. All those stories of sleep tell a story, right? They all tell a story. My daddy was never happier than when everybody was in their place and the grandchildren were running around and he was asleep in that recline. Because everybody's in their place. That was the story. It wasn't he wanted to sleep and be away from It was just everybody's where they're supposed to be. And it doesn't get any better. And that baby's asleep in that crowd, right? Because they've been fed. And they've been taken care of. And they're being strolled. And how many times did you say to them, boy, I wish I could be asleep in a stroller right now. <clears throat> I'm sorry about my, sounds like my September allergies, but it's June, I guess. But there's stories to that sleeping. 
And so let's, let's watch Jesus for just a moment. In the midst of wind and in the midst of a storm, Jesus is found in the Gospel of Mark asleep. Asleep. It's recorded for us in the other Gospels. But in Mark, Mark focuses on this asleep of Jesus. Jesus sound asleep in a stern in the boat. I went to the Jones house Friday night and I heard a little bluegrass group called the Page Turners sing and play before I ran down here to worship. And one of their songs was, I want to let go in the wind. I want to let go in the wind. And so Jesus, somehow asleep in a boat, knew when he could just let go. And so he's sound asleep. In verse 35, the disciples and Jesus decide it's time to go across the sea to the other side. He'd been teaching on that same boat all day. So he's tired, and it's time to go. The crowds were so big, and they're on the side of the water, and he gets up on the boat to teach, and he's teaching these stories we've been sharing together, and he's on that boat, and the disciples say it's time to go, and they stay in the same boat, and they head to the other side. Verse 36, 35 says, we're going. Verse 36 says, it's time to leave the crowds behind. It's time to leave the crowds behind. And so they leave in the same boat, leaving a large crowd, to go to the other side. But there's an interesting phrase in verse 36 that maybe on a familiar story you didn't hear and it didn't jump out at you a lot. But in verse 36, and leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat just as he was. Other boats were with him. Verse 36, the Gospel of Mark. Other boats were with him. My picture has always been He's tired, the crowds, it's time to go, let's get to the other side, let's leave the crowds behind, we're getting to the other side. And Mark reminds us, importantly, other boats are with him. What were they doing? Who were they? Were they going to follow? Or were they already fishing? Were they already there? Were they on vacation? How many of you have been to Hilton Head? You want to put up your umbrella, and there's 10,000 people sharing your vacation with you. Katie always said when she was tiny, tiny, at three years of age one time, we went into the Krispy Kreme at Myrtle Beach, and she said, Daddy, why are we sharing our vacation with thousands of people? She thought we owned the Krispy Kreme, I guess. <laughs> but there were other boats with him. So as he goes to the other side, it says there's other boats. You know, is that your experience? No matter how much you try to get alone, get away. There are other boats with you, right? I have a feeling when we hear stories and stories and stories, they're going to tell us about there's other people still with them, right? They get away. They say, it's time to go. It's time to go. But there are other boats with us. I think the first thing Fur did when he got on the van was make sure he had the right number that he was coming home with. We don't hear much about these other boats. But Mark records it for some reason. Brian Sutherland of Small Tall Ministries, songwriter, teacher, Bible study leader, says this, in the midst of the details of our own drama, in the midst and the details of our own discernment and drama, in the struggles and dynamics in our own particular boat, we are subtly but unmistakably reminded we're not the only one. We're not the only ones. We are not the only ones. There were other boats with them. The winds of time had blown, and Jesus is asleep on the boat, and I don't want to leave him there for you. The story goes to say that the boat is swamped, and the waves are rocking that boat. Tom and Patricia and Charlie could come tell us about why a storm could show up in a hurry, the Sea of Galilee. They could tell us about mountains on one side and hills on another side and, and how it could, it, it could really, in a flat hurry, and, and, the, and the boat's rocking and the waves are hitting it not just once but over and over, and, th and that boat's getting swamped. And Jesus is asleep in the stern in the boat, in the wind, 
And the disciples don't say, Jesus, get up. You're getting ready to drown. They say, don't you know we're getting ready to be perished? And Jesus gets up and says, peace be still. And the sea is calm and the winds cease to blow. The disciples don't respond to Jesus. But they talk to each other, the scripture says. And they say to each other, who is this? That even the seas and the winds obey. Who is this? So even they heard all the stories and the parables. And they're continuing to experience Jesus. But they still don't have it yet. Or not all of it. And they say, who is this? That even at his voice, the seas and the winds stop. The other boats, do you think that he only calmed the water around them? Is that, is that your experience? Is that your thought? We all gathered for worship today. Felt pretty good about it. Too bad all those other people didn't come. But there's other boats with us, right? The way we live, how we respond to wind, whether we lose heart or not, whether we care or not, there's other boats with us. With us. And Jesus calmed that sea, and i got to believe that all the other boats that were with him, following or just in a near presence, experienced, who is this? That at his voice, the seas can calm and the winds stop. So this morning, do not lose heart. When the winds blow, when the winds blow, do not lose heart. And do you respond to that wind with fear or with faith? Oh God, break my heart for what breaks yours. It seems overwhelming, God. I'm not going to make a difference. All the soil's rocky. My little faith's not going to make a difference. My voice is not going to make a difference. But besides, I want to sleep. The wind's blowing and I don't want to face it. I don't, I don't have the energy or the, or the desire to go change, the, change anything. I, I'm afraid. It's, it's easier for me to be afraid. When the winds blow, do not lose heart. We have a Savior. We have the gift of God in flesh that dwelt among us and walked on this earth that knows how to let go in the wind, can sleep because he knows there's nothing to be afraid of. And that his voice can calm the seas. With the voice of, what word did he say? Peace. Be still. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray together. God, we prepare our hearts to respond to you. We prepare our hearts to leave this place and, and get after it. To rest, to experience, to develop relationships. Father, the winds are different for every single person of the 200 in this place. Lead us, O oh God, to, to face those winds to let go in the wind with faith, not fear. Sure, it's scary. Sure, it's something to be afraid of. Sure, it's uncertain. Sure, it's overwhelming. Sure is I can't handle it right now. But, oh, God, lead us this day in a relationship with the storyteller that did more than tell stories. To place our faith in Jesus. And confront wind with faith, not fear. Lead us, O oh God, as a church, as people, as a family, 
as individuals. Oh, God, lead us. Lead us to be light, not lightning. Lead us to place our heart in your hands. I ask all this in the precious holy name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Let's stand and sing together a hymn of response. There is a Savior. I like those first two words. There is. Let's stand and sing. Uh, Emmy's going to come and have our benediction and read a scripture in just a minute, so I want you to be able to see her, okay? So thank you for sitting for just a moment, but I want to bring to your attention and bring in front of you Charlotte Cave. Charlotte comes to our church from Farmville Baptist Church in Farmville, Virginia, and uh, she has been with us now a little over a year, right? And uh, she has a sister that's active in our church as well, but Charlotte comes on her own, and uh, she comes to be a member of this church. This is her home as a grad student, and possibly her home after that, so she wanted to go ahead and make this her church home. And so we are so glad that she's here. And so if you promise to be a good example in front of her as we lean on her to help us and be an example in front of us, will you say the word welcome? Welcome. All right, all right, all right. See, I told you. All right. But Charlotte, we are so glad that you're here. Uh, Larry, we're excited that you're here. I know you're kind of a significant special friend there, pretty serious, because I see you around a lot. So Larry, has, we're, we're, has, we're glad you're here. God bless you. All right, after Emmy's benediction uh, and scripture reading, uh, please come up and, and shake Charlotte's hand, okay? Please stand. Sixteen through 20. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to, to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. <laughs> 